Hello, today we are going on a little trip. I'm revisiting a place where I took my favorite so far Milky Way shot. It was back two years ago and it was this shot. If you are subscribed to the channel, you probably recognize this shot because I have done like three, four or maybe even five tutorials, astrophotography, editing, shooting, etc. tutorials on my channel already based on this image. And today I'm going there to the exact same location with the whole new gear. I have a new camera, I have a new lens, I have an astro filter, I even have an astro tracker and I'm gonna try to beat the shot from two years ago. Of course, it would be super easy to beat it, especially with the tracker. And what I wanna show you guys is that how much of a game changer is an astro tracker in astrophotography and nightscape photography, etc. I'm gonna explain all the all the quirks and everything you need to know about the tracker and why is it such a game changer. So join me on the road. I'm gonna tie lapse into my location right now and see you there. Alright guys, I have arrived at the location, so let me actually set up the Astro Tracker, Polar on it and do everything that I need to do in preparation to actually start shooting with the tracker. And then I will walk you through what I did, why I did that and what the Astro Tracker actually allows you to do when it comes to astrophotography. And then we're gonna go through some kind of a pros and cons about the tracker. And then at the end of the video, I will show you the final result, the image that I will be capturing today in comparison with the image that I have taken two years ago, so you can see the difference how much of an impact the Astro Tracker actually does for your astrophotography. Enjoy the setting up time lapse. All right, so I actually have originally plans to shoot this part of the video out in the field last night, but honestly, it got pretty scary out there because I heard some tumbling in the woods. I was afraid that it was like a wild boar or maybe even a wild bear or something like this. So I just sat in the car and I waited silently until my camera finished capturing all the exposures. But the upside is that now, Instead of only showing you the adventure, I can actually also show you the raw images that I have captured yesterday, so you can exactly see what I'm talking about. So, the Star Tracker. Here is what I have. I have the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. And at first, let's say, why would you even want to use a Star Tracker and how does it work and what does it do that is such a game changer in astrophotography? As you probably know, the Earth is rotating around its own axis. I have a cool prop right here. The Earth is rotating around its own axis and because it's rotating, we perceive it as a rotational movement of the entire sky around the north and south celestial poles. So, if we try to make a long exposure image of the night sky, if we let the camera on, we will see some star trails because the star from the observer from the Earth, the star are moving in those circles around the north and south celestial pole. So the Astro Tracker, what it basically does, it rotates our camera it rotates our camera in just the right speed and just the right direction to counteract this rotational movement of Earth. So from the perspective of the camera, the sky is static. And this is a game changer because right now we are not constrained anymore by the rule of 500, which basically limits the total exposure time we can get before we can see star trace. And if you don't know what the rule of 500 is, I can direct you to my other video about this and all of the other camera settings that I would recommend for the night sky with all the explanation why would you want to use these settings and not the other. The link is up here and also in the description box if you want to check those out. But basically for wide angle photography like Milky Way shots, nightscapes, you're probably looking at something around from 15 to 25 seconds of exposure time per exposure. And it may seem like a long time, but honestly, if you're shooting the dark sky, it is not a long time. And if we use a tracker like this, we can prolong this exposure time to a couple of minutes even. And this 
has massive consequences because no longer we need to shoot wide open and also if you're doing untracked astrophotography you may be tempted to invest in very expensive glass very expensive prime lenses like for instance with maximum aperture of f1.4 and these lenses are massively massively expensive especially compared to like an astro tracker i got this for like 400 bucks or something like this and a super fast prime lens would be like two thousand dollars or something like this so the difference is huge so if you use the Astro Tracker, what are the main benefits? Well, because we are increasing the exposure time, we can now lower the ISO, which makes our images less noisy and better quality. And also we can stop down the lens from the maximum aperture to get better optical performance, because usually all of the lenses, even the most expensive ones, if they are wide open with the maximum aperture, they will have some aberrations, especially on the corners of the image, like chromatic aberrations, etc. And I also explain all that in my other video, which I mentioned before. So if you wanna check those out in much more detail, I will direct you to the video, again, link down below. But of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbow because with this Astro Tracker, there is a little bit more workflow and a little bit more setup that you need to do in order to be successful in capturing the night sky. Firstly, you need to properly align it and aim it at the north or south celestial pole. So right here, if I take this cap off, there's actually a scope here. And you need to look for the scope and you need to see, you need to see in the sky, for instance, the Polaris on the Northern Hemisphere, in order to correctly align the tracker so when it rotates then it actually rotates around the axis that goes through the northern or southern celestial pole in order for tracking to be successful and this is a pretty complex process on its own so i will be actually making a whole separate video about how to properly set up this astro tracker how to align it and how to make sure that you can track for a couple of minutes long even if you have long lenses for deep sky astrophotography so if you don't want to miss out on that video definitely consider subscribing to my channel a video about this subject will be coming into the channel very shortly in like one or two weeks from now so stay tuned for that video and once you have your tracker set up properly and you take a couple of exposures then you run into another problem because if the tracker is rotating to counteract the movement of the earth in order to keep the sky static it will actually make the ground appear blurry because if you're photographing nightscapes where you have ground as well as the sky like I did last night the ground will be blurry and the sky will be static so what you need to do in order to have both of them sharp is you need to actually take a separate exposure of the ground with the tracker turned off then on that exposure the stars will be blurry and this, the ground will be static and then you need to blend those two images together so let me actually show you a couple of raw images from yesterday so you can see those examples, what is blurry and what is sharp on which of the exposures. So here's one of the exposures of the sky. As you can see, I have used a shutter speed of 120 seconds, which is two minutes, which is very long. F3.5, I have stopped down my F2.8 24 prime, two thirds of a stop in order to get better optical performance. And I used ISO 640, which is very low for astrophotography. And as you can see, the stars are sharp but the ground is blurry. I have a tree line here and if I advance to next exposure you can see that the ground is sort of slipping away because of the of the movement of the tracker but the sky stays exactly in the same position and this is good because now we can stack those images together to further reduce noise in the sky and if you don't know what I'm talking about I also have a separate video about how to process images in order to get the best quality so you can also check out the video right here and I will actually make a whole playlist I will put links up here and in the description of this video I have a bunch of astrophotography related tutorials so after you are done with watching this video make sure to check out other videos on my channel and if you check out the last image right here you can see that the ground is now sharp but the stars are blurry you can see the star trails this is what I was talking about these are the star trails so now we need to take this exposure and blend it with a stack of these exposures right here from 1 to 13 and that way we will produce our final image. By the way, if you are wondering why these images are so blue, that is because I was using an astronomic CLS filter to cut down any light pollution because I'm living in a pretty urban area and this area where I was photographing last night is not exactly a truly dark sky so I definitely can recommend the astronomic CLS filter. I already have a bunch of videos, I think I have like four videos or something like this on my channel about this filter so I will put the link to the playlist up here if you want to check those out. If you live in kind of an urban area or suburban area these filters can really improve your astrophotography. Highly recommend it. So as I said this is a little bit more workflow because you need to actually go into Photoshop you need to know how to blend those images and the blending of these images is also a pretty complicated process especially right here when I have this uneven tree line with a lot of jagged edges tree branches etc. So I will also be making a separate video about how to blend those two frames together into a final nightscape beautiful image. I have been actually asked to do that 
a long time ago. So this video is finally coming to the channel again in like a one or two weeks from now. So definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss out on this video. But right now, let me actually show you my final result from last night because it turned out pretty amazing. So this is the final result. Look how beautiful the Milky Way looks over the horizon here. It is definitely by far the most amazing image of the night sky that I have captured so far. And if you compare it to the image that I have captured two years ago, then we can clearly see that the amount of detail I was able to pull out from the Milky Way this year is far more superior than the image that I have taken two years ago without the tracker. So I am extremely happy with this purchase. Like I said, the Astro Tracker is a game changer in astrophotography. Even if you have the most expensive lens and the most expensive camera, and those are orders of magnitude more expensive than an Astro Tracker, you probably wouldn't even come close to the results you can get with an Astro Tracker. And if you do, imagine what you can get if you add an Astro Tracker on top of all that amazing glass and cameras, right? So the Astro Tracker is really the way to go. If you want to get that Astro Tracker or any of the other gear that I use, go over to the description of this video. There you will find affiliated links to Amazon with all the gear that I use, including this tracker. And if you use one of my links and make a purchase on Amazon within the next 24 hours, it doesn't even need to be one of those products. You can be anything on Amazon within 24 hours from clicking for my link. I will get a teeny tiny kickback from Amazon. So that would be definitely much appreciated. But that's it for this video. Like I said, two very exciting tutorials about astrophotography will be coming up to my channel very soon. So definitely consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on those videos. And also check out my channel. I already have a bunch of videos about astrophotography, about processing tutorials, etc. and whatnot. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I answer every single comment on YouTube, so don't hesitate, just ask away whatever is on your mind. But that's it for now. Have a nice day, clear skies, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.